Jesus hope this morning. We say thank you for giving us your name. Thank you, Jesus, for giving us your name. The name that is above our situation. The name that opens every door. The name is the key that opens every door. We lift up your name high this morning. We lift up your name high this morning. His name is the victory. We have victory in you. We lift up your name, Jesus. We lift up your name, Jesus. Hallelujah.
Because it's a covenant keeping God. He will surely keep his covenant with us. He will do marvels in our midst. He will do marvels in our lives. So let us go to him this morning. Singing that song. That we know you are a covenant keeping God. And there is none like you. You are unquestionably God. Man set a hymn, brother, blah, blah, blah.
this week. It will. Glory to Jesus. How many of us fasted in the past week? It means we don't have we don't have problems. Hallelujah. We don't have issues. Amen. 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 I don't think, unless you did it out of disobedience. <laughs> but if you didn't fast, that means uh, all your you are so tired. As saying you have no issues. Hallelujah. You have nothing to present before God. Amen. Amen. But you know, well, during the week, one thing that God the Holy Spirit kept telling me is that. When we are talking about marvels, you know marvels that make you an advertisement of God's glory. An advertisement of God's goodness. That when you are going, when you are passing by, people will be pointing at, ah, do you see that sister? That is the one I shared that testimony with you. Do you remember? That, is, that, that means you are an advertisement of God's goodness. But when you keep going to church every time and you have no testimony, People will just uh, see her. That's how they go. That's how they go every Sunday. But I have seen the changes in the lives of everybody here today. Nobody, even the youths. You, can you see the new members of the choir? Yeah. Oh, yeah. There is a change in everybody's life. For the good, for the better. And that is great. That is what we want to see. Hallelujah. Yeah. That we are gathering and we are happy. We are blessed in the presence of our God. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's go through our service times. Every Sunday we have special celebration services from 10 a.m. to 12 noon. Hallelujah. And the intercessory prayer starts at half past nine. Then every first Sunday of the month is our divine empowerment Hallelujah. and communion service. And today is one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have come to be empowered in God's presence. Hallelujah. Yeah. On Tuesdays, our home cell meetings are held at Mama Monica's house in Alexandra from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. And then on Wednesday here in the church auditorium, we meet from half past 6 until 8 p.m. Hallelujah. On alternate prayer and uh, alternate Fridays, we have prayer meetings. And the next one is this coming Friday, the 12th of July, from half past 6 until 8 p.m. And then on Saturdays, we also pray here early in the morning from 7 to half past 8 in the morning. Amen. Can we quickly do kingdom business? Okay, Jean Sunday, hallelujah. Every last Sunday of the month, sorry. Every last Sunday of the month is our Jean Sunday, where we come to church in our jeans. This, the purpose of this is to evangelize and tell people that you don't always have to come to church looking formal. You can also come to church in your jeans. God does not look at the outside. He looks at the inside. Amen. Kingdom business, please continue to pay your tithes and pledges. The account details of the church are as follows. Life Center Bible Church is a standard bank check account 202-517-586. And just a brief feedback on the issue of the children's church. So far, we've been able to raise like about 27,000 rent. Hallelujah. Amen. Wow. Yeah. Do you think it's, for the, it's chips? It's not plantain chips, so. or it's not um, potato chips. It's, it's solid money. Hallelujah. To the glory of God. But the only thing we're waiting for now is the architect said we need the approval of the city of Johannesburg. So we are sorting all that out. And I believe that everything is working together for our good. Amen. Everything is working together for our good. It's the Bible says that we may be pressed on every side. But we'll be victorious. Victory belongs to Jesus. Hallelujah. So we, we, we don't look at the situation, we look at the future, we look at the end result. Because he's the one that knows the end right from the beginning, hallelujah. So if you have not yet pledged towards that, please do so and redeem your pledges. Because the moment we get the approval, we'll go ahead and do it right over again then. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. And we'll all rise up with Jesus joy in our hearts. Hallelujah. 
you know why I say Jesus joy? Because I've heard it which I say it before that there's a joy that comes from beer. Hallelujah. <laughs> it's true from how Paul that people will be so you they will look happy. But that is not real happiness. That's what the joy we get in Jesus is real. Hallelujah. Amen. So with Jesus' joy in our hearts, let's put our hands together this morning and welcome the ministry of Reverend Dr. Solution. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Father, we stand. We lift up our hands and lift up your hands to you. We lift up our hands and to you. Father, we look unto you. Feed us with the bread of heaven. Natural intervention in our faith. In our finances, in the issues of the life. We thank you because you are a very present help in the time of need. No matter how tumultuous the wind becomes, you are there for us. We have come unto you. And the Bible says, Unto you that answered prayers shall all flesh come. That's where we've come unto. Thank you for today's empowerment that it will be generational. It will transform to hundreds of years in the mighty name of Jesus. Blessed be your holy name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And because you believe, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. Let's have our seats. Good morning, church. Good morning, Pastor. in Christ Jesus. I will continue by the grace of God this series, Living the Maximized Life. Today I will focus on your faith in God is your fortune. Can you please write it? Your faith in God is your fortune. But I will not be speaking the way I used to. You understand? There is a change in order of things. I will tell you what God tells me to tell you. I've become a channel whereby God ministers, speaks to you, and I will appreciate it. God himself will appreciate it if you take the words coming this morning to you as if it's coming directly from God, because it's coming directly from God. Things will no longer be the way you used to be. Amen. Because you are no more ordinary, and don't stay ordinary. Your background is irregular. Yes, sir. I hope you are listening yes, this morning. Sir. I need all your maximum attention. I hope you are listening this morning. 
things will no more be the way it used to be. Amen. We are in the era of marvels of God. We are in the era of the supernatural acts of God. A miracle is only a supernatural intervention in the affairs of men. Man cannot do miracle for himself. What you make happen for yourself is what you can make happen. But when God makes something happen for you, it becomes real. Yeah. And that is why we seek him. Yeah. That is why we love him. Because he is a father. You understand? Quit ye like ordinary men. Are you with me? There is a limit to the intelligence of man. There is a limit to the orchestration that men can bring about. But there is no limit to God's orchestration. There is no limit to God's power. There is no limit to the ability of God that he can use to bring about changes in your life. If you will totally devote your life to him and seek him out of a pure heart and practice what he said to you, put him to a challenge. God, you said, do it. God, you said to me in your word then do it. He will manifest that which he will do. We will continue taking the test that we have been taking. When we stand to pray, we will use Exodus 34.10. But let's go to Job chapter 5, verse 9 this morning. And I will be taking the test from message translation. Job chapter 5, verse 9 this morning. The other scripture that we will be considering today will be Matthew chapter 14. From verse 23 to the end. Those are the two scriptures that we'll do. If God allow us, by the grace of God, of course, we will get into Galatians chapter 2, to verse 20. Hello. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We give him praise. I want you to know you are one with God. You are not God, the Father. You are an offshoot of God. You are joined to him. Just like a baby resembles his father, or her father, or her mother, that is the way you resemble God. Children of men are men. Children, offsprings of goats are goats. Offspring of God are gods on earth. We are not to rule and dominate another person, but we are to exercise God's dominion over all the things of the earth to continue his majestic act. And these are things that we cannot do on our own except by his ability. Are you getting me? The time has come in our walk, brethren, that we have to be spiritual. We have to go back to the basis of spirituality and take God's work in all honesty with no, no, nothing added to it. We practice in the world in its naked form. Are you with me? Yes, out there, out there. I know there's a lot of things going on. People can add to the word of God. People can make things happen for themselves. People can pretend this is this. People can be... But I always tell you, and I will tell you, there is no deceit from God. Are you with me? 1%, 0 0.5% deceit, 0.1% deceit in anything makes it come from the devil, corrupts it. God is the purest of all truth. Hello? And that is why Christianity has to be between you and God and has to extend to man. Glory to God. Glory to God. This morning we are in for a time of empowerment that will last your generation. 
Not only this generation, even generations coming. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. God will open your eyes to certain truths and you will never remain the same. I said you will never remain the same. Amen. This is where we are going to start from. Job chapter 5 verse 9, like I said, after all, this is the transition. This is the translation of that verse. After all, let's read together. After all, he is to us from the great and unexpected There is no end to be surprised. You do me a favor. While I'm talking, Google or check your dictionary. I want synonyms for the word mother. Because this is a year of marvels. Oh, this is a year of supernatural, extraordinary intervention of God, manifestation of His power in your life. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. Praise God. He said, after all, after everything that you have said, <coughs> glory to God. God, talking about God, is famous for great and of unexpected acts. Are you getting me? Look at me, everybody. Look at me. People are known for what, people are known for what they are famous at. You can give me examples. For example, even here, you are famous with playing guitar. Trumpet, you are famous with trumpet. Somebody is famous with playing this. Who is he? Right or not? Yes, God is synonymous, ah. known, associated with, constantly doing, oh. constantly doing. It's something that he will subconsciously hey. do. Great and unexpected acts. Great and unexpected acts. I want you, please, listen to me. Your Christianity not to be religion. Because I don't know how many years of life you are spending with God. If those years are void of great and unexpected acts that somebody is famous with, it is doubtful whether you are associated with it. Because we think uncountable is the highest word. Mm. Until we start hearing of tri trillion, gazillion. Mm. The word Google, do you know where it comes from? Hmm? It comes from the highest word in numbers, Google. Mm. So when they want to re re register that company that has the highest number of references that you can have, The marvels of God that you expect, as we see, if you can help me with this, I know you can work something out. When she's reading it, if you can project it. What is a marvel? What is extraordinary out of God? Oh, praise God. I like that. Oh, thank you so much. Look at this. Number one, be what? Amazed. Amazed. Something that will surprise you. That is what we are expecting from your life. Yes. Yes. Now, you are not the source. Mm -hmm. The source is? Oh. Oh, yes. I want you to keep seeing that. Mm -hmm. Again.
Take over. Oh. You understand? Your eyes are goggly now. That's where goggle glasses come from. Right? Not believe one's eyes Are you getting it? Yes, sir. Are you getting it? Yes, this is what God is full of. Yes. This is what God is full of. Mm. And the key to getting this amazement, astonishment, awesome acts of God, wonders of God, not getting results that eyes or ears may not be, hey. not knowing what to say, dumbfounded. The key is your faith in him. The key is your faith in him. There is no amazing wonder of God that has not been that's not come to pass through faith in him. None. None. It's not about how much you can believe God. You can believe. Try, try, try believe God. Stay there. Hide, hide. No, it's not like that. It's a simple trust in him. Yes. It's a simple trust in what he said to you. Mm. He said it. You believed it. And that settled it. Yeah. Yes. He said it. You believed it. And that settles it. It's not about straining. Straining. Fasting and fasting and fasting and fasting. Praying and praying and praying and praying and praying. It's not about twisting his hand. It's not that God. This is something you should check out. Who is this God? Many people are serving the unknown God. Are you with me? I am privileged by his grace to have a picture of God from my natural father. My natural father depicts a lot that God will do for me. And that is why certain actions I take in life, it's because my natural father sets the pace. My natural mother. Are you with me? I know beyond imagination. You wake me up. I can tell you what my father can do. Hallelujah. When Jesus came on earth, when Jesus came on earth, he knows his father beyond doubt. Beyond external influence. He knows his father beyond what the Pharisees could say. He knew, he knew his father much more that he has to teach his natural father and mother about him. Are you getting what I'm saying? We need to know him more like that. Quit like natural men. Time for real spirituality has come. I am looking at men that God will use for signs and wonders. I am using, I'm looking at vessels through whom God will flow to this generation. When we understand who our father is, then we will know who the enemy is. Because without a real understanding of the father, you won't know who the enemy is. And we will be yielding unconsciously to the enemy and not knowing that we are yielding to the devil. When you don't know who God is, really, there will be a mixture of yielding to the enemy, even along the line of yielding to him.
places. He'll be shuttling between, in South Africa, between two, three places in South Africa where his children are, and then he'll be going back home to meet people. To meet people back home, bless them, come back, just be like that. The same way, if I can predict my natural father, I should be able to predict my heavenly father. Yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you. interact with man mm. on natural level. Mm. He becomes so familiar mm. with men that men don't know. Mm. Brethren, nobody, don't let me forget Hebrews 11, 3, because that should be going there, and Galatians 2, 20 from there. Just wrote, write those down, down. The key to the manifestation is on earth that wants his children to struggle. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was in the year 2010. I was in Haiti. My going to Haiti was prophesied while we were in a prayer meeting. You remember those prayer meetings we were having upstairs in my house? You were there. You were there. Who else was there? Of course. Hello. Hallelujah. It looks foolish. It looks unnatural. It looks like it cannot be. You were there, weren't you? Somebody just opened his mouth during praying in tongues and interpretation and said so. I didn't even, even know that there was uh, something going on, a turmoil in Haiti. Earthquake then. Do you understand? So I went to Haiti. Mr. Are you there? Were you there that you were there? Good. I really went for that meeting. I, kept, I mean, for the uh, earthquake thing. Mission. The mission. I was there. God said something to me from Psalm 23. He used Psalm 23 to show me. He said, a sheep that is sick that is suffering. For, you remember the scripture so that you get it in context. Lord Lord the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And you mentioned like all those ones. Yeah, but it's about the shepherd. He says, the sheep that is not following the shepherd is the one that is in debt, that is sick, that is wayward. A sheep that is wayward. Is the one that can be attacked easily yeah. by the enemy. Yeah. You understand? Yes. There will be times when trials of life, of course, you will see it from the text. Which, what did I say, two texts I'm picking up from today? No, no. I started from Job 5 9, and the next scripture I gave you was Matthew 14. Thank you. You will see it from that story. You will see it from that story. Hebrews 11 3 comes after. The key. To manifestation of his goodness in your life, of his favor, is write this down. John, first John, chapter four, and verse four. <coughs> what did he say? First John, chapter four. First John chapter 4. This that is in you is what? Is it smaller? No. Is it smaller? No. Is it lesser? No. Is it 
impure. No. What did he say he is? What did he say he is? What did he say he is? I am standing up your pure minds this morning. Something is wrong with what we are believing. We either believe the Bible or not. This one said greater is he that is in you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. In business world, the greater one lives in you. In your different profession, the greater one lives in you. In the families, Families of all the earth, yes. the greater one lives in you. Yes. The greater family is yours. Yes. In finances, greater the greater one. one lives in you. Amen. The greater one is in your finances. Amen. I'm stirring up your pure mind to genuine Christianity, to genuine living on the word of God. We have left the world for traditions of men. We have left the pure word of God to reach things. We have left the word to following our experiences. Because over time, the, the devil has so much corrupted the world, all what we see is mediocrity and we think is superiority is the common thing. Common sense is no sense. The best sense is the sense of God. Amen. Common sense will tell you to avoid it. Every one of us, born again or not born again, has that nature in him. We have the nature of God. Every one of us, there's something on our inside that cries to come back home to God, that tells us, to come back home to God. Especially if you are born again. If you are born again and alive to God. You are so sensitive to him. You hear him more. You are conscious of what he says more. Than every other person. But yielding to that. Is this different thing. But God has set you up. For amazing wonders. God has set you up. For miracles that will never end. Amen. If you would take the spirit of today and run the rest of your life from now on, sickness will not mark your life. Amen. Poverty cannot mark your life. Amen. Mediocrity cannot mark your life. Average living cannot mark your life. It may stay long, but it will surely come. All your desires, all your expected end will come. Like Jeremiah 29 11 says. Every one of you have good desire for yourself. Inside of you, good desire, big expectations that you're working, that you personally want it to come to pass. Yes or no? Yes. I have good news for you this morning. It may be disturbing, but it's a good news. God wants much more than that for your life. God wants much more than that for your life. We have come to an era well, we can't do it on our own again. We just have to depend solely on him. We just have to rely solely on him, on the greater one. We just have to rely on the greater one. We just have to walk by what the greater one says. We just have to listen and know we are so This is your year of amazement. Amen. Year of pleasant surprise. Amen. Your hope. You see, there are three things that abide permanent. Hope, love, hope, and faith. I've said, love is God. Are you with me? Your faith is the key to uh, your fortune. You're walking in Him to this mystery that we're talking about. And your hope, which is also your imagination, which is the way you are expected to expect, mm -hmm. is the constant guide, daily guide, 
under your control to these amazing wonders. Are you getting what I'm saying this morning? What we will be doing shortly will be a remembrance of what Jesus has done. There is a very thin line between in exercising it between religion and life giving. <coughs> A very thin line. And if we are not careful, we might miss it. Many people do miss it, but we will not miss it in Jesus' name. God is interested in getting us in line, in getting us in his way of blessing, doing it over and over. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 14. It shall not continue to be the way it used to be. Amen. It will not be ordinary. Amen. It will be getting supernatural with you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You are not requested to perform in life. That's what Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 is all about. Hello. Yeah. You are not requested to perform. Get it in the right constant. Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20. That's what it's all about. But let's say this. Galatians and Matthew chapter 4. There's something about looking. You understand? Especially in your own Bible, your own electronic device and all these things. I'm the following. Thank you for the generation. Chinese in Matthew chapter 14 verse 23. Are we there together? I want you to read with me because you see, somebody, one of our guest ministers, left this with us. He said, and again, we know this you cannot preach anything outside the world. Mm -hmm. The word is the best way of preaching. Yeah. Any experience, any preaching, any, any explanation that you give to the world has to stem up from the world. Are you getting me? I mean, the word is the best form, is the purest. The word is the purest. Verse 23. And when he has sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea. Tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. Verse 24. Are we together? Yes. 24. You didn't get it? You don't get it? Yes, we are going to 25. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went on the deck, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, it is a spirit, and they cried out for fear. But straight away, Jesus spoke unto them, saying, be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee. And he said, and he said, and he said, and when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked out on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately, Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him. Say, of a truth, thou art the Son of God. 
And when they were gone over, they came into the land of the Nazareth. When the men of that place had knowledge of him, they sent out into all the country round about and brought unto him all that were diseased. And besought him that they might only touch the hem of his garment. As many as touched were made from verse 34. And when they were gone over, they came into the land of Gennesaret. And when the men of that place had knowledge of him, the knowledge of verse 33, you understand? Yes. Knowledge of verse 33, of the true God, the Son of God, and brought unto him all that were diseased. <coughs> and besought him that he might only touch the hem of his hand. And as many as touched were made perfectly whole. I may not get to the those verses this morning. I will not. At all. But they are loaded. Those of you that are mature, I want you to go and study that. The era of mediocrity stopped today. Amen. Let's go back to verse 24. I want to talk about you. I want to talk about you. <coughs> but the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. The ship is in the midst of the sea. Of the sea. <coughs> it's been tossed <coughs> to and fro because the wind is contrary or was contrary. It's a past story. It's a true life story. Does that depict the life of somebody here today? When the wind of life is contrary to your ship, you are in a boat. And you are being tossed to and fro. You are being tossed to and fro because life is like contrary. Number one thing I want you to know is this you are in a ship, you are not alone. There are so many other people in the same boat with you. Their sheep is also being tossed because the wind is contrary. Brethren, is the good news of life is contrary. The wind of life is contrary. The wind of life is. Can we leave the smart to go in the way that is contrary or to way to go in the right way? The, you see, when something is contrary, it means it's trying. To get you opposed to your destination. It's trying to prevent you from getting to where you are going in life. Yes. Are you getting me? Yes. So, will it be wise to go with the wind or go contrary to contrary? Go contrary. contrary. None of them is. <laughs> Fear actually naturally follows the wind. The wind blows it. Are you with me? But what is God's wisdom? Mm. In every situation you find yourself in life, what is God's wisdom? What is God saying there? Mm. Are you getting me? Yes. Verse 25. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled. Saying it is a spirit, and they cried out for fear. The ground on which all these things is happening is the sea. The ship is on the sea. Jesus is coming on the sea. Solution is coming on the sea. But they were afraid. Afraid of getting out of their ship. 
afraid because there is a ship that's already been tossed to and fro and is contrary, and the spirit is now coming to make it worse. When you look at it, everything spells out one thing for them death. Everything. Are you with me? The wind spells out death. The spirits, the threats of the neighbors, the coming of the president of the even when the solution appears, they think. They think it's true. It's come to announce the same thing. But brethren, on the land is number one, they acknowledge it's a spirit. It is a spirit. We think when spiritual, when spirits appear or spiritual issues come, it will be very different from our natural. It won't be so different. I always tell people, I say, for you to look at miracle, to see what a miracle is, in the real sense, look at this boy. You get what I'm saying? You always understand that. When this happened, I say, this is exactly how miracle is. There's a pastor, one of my pastors here, will always say, uh, the, in every supernatural, that is the woman, she'll say, I say, there is a natural component of a supernatural. And it is true. Is it not true? There is always a natural component of the supernatural. Don't let us miss the thing. Spirit. It's a spirit. And they were afraid. And listen to me. In this world, the flesh profited nothing. nothing. Everybody say it again. The, the flesh, flesh profited, profited nothing. nothing. Say it again. The, the flesh profited nothing. nothing. It's the spirit that gives life. Yes. It's the spirit that gives life. Everything that we do in the flesh is the spirit that gives life. But because they don't know him, Jesus has to say in his eye, don't be afraid. Did he not say so? He said, be of good share. It is me. Don't be afraid. In all situations of life, in all, everybody say all. all. Everybody say it again, all. all. In all trials of life, you understand? Christ will always come to you saying it is I. Be of good cheer. It is I. Do not be afraid. In how many situations the least figure we can come out of this to me is 10 or 11. But, then, all. but I thought maybe Thomas left. For something. That's what I was thinking. And again, I also think Judas Iscariot means I'm going to do some misappropriation with money. So many games of imagination. But 10 and 1, is it the same? <laughs> Different reasons. The figure could be 15. It could be 30. There are some people that have been there for some time. They decide to move across. It's just a let us go. It's a ship, so it's a boat. So a lot of people, do you understand? So you are not alone in what is happening. And God is speaking to you. Be of good comfort, my people. I will never leave you nor forsake you. I have a very present help in the time of trouble. God is saying to you, I am God. From the beginning, I know what you will go through. And I have stationed myself and my angels wow. to work for you and with you and in you. God is saying, Amen. be of good cheer. I will not leave you comfortless. Amen. I will not abandon you. Amen. I am with you. It is I. God is saying, it is I. It is I. In that situation, Jesus is saying it is I. And Peter, <coughs> now look at this. In that situation, Jesus has appeared, everything has been going on. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, 
If it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. It's now changed, the ground now changed. It's no more sea of life. Sea of life could represent people, figure of life. I mean, figurative speech. Sea could mean people. Sea could mean the whole world. Sea could mean market. Sea, do you understand me? And the ship where you are, you are in the, the, the spirit in the body. But now the ground changed. It's not general, 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 general. It's not specific. One of his disciples, one of his followers, one of the people that know him. You know they didn't know him. They were scared. They said it's a spirit. They know it's a spirit. It's coming. He is a spirit in the human body. Be you. Bid me to come upon this water. What men don't walk on water. Do they walk on water? That is why the coming of Jesus was strange. I want you to be getting Christianity will not stand in the wisdom of men or in the prevailing situation and circumstances of life which we are living. Are you getting me? Men don't walk on water. They know it's Jesus. They know him as a man. He is a spirit in, in, inside the body. And they started walking on water, on the sea, general. Not on water. If any man is in Christ Jesus, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become... How many people are new creatures here? You need Rachel. Listen to me. That scripture said, Behold, all things are all things have become new, and all things are now of God. All things from now on are of God. Follow me carefully. That guy is a disciple. I promise I didn't hurry. I can stop. It's about what he can achieve inside of me. You understand? But there's something about hunger and thirst for righteousness, for revelation that pulls it out. And that is why in a spiritual church, are you getting me? In a church where they are spirit sensitive, we will flow, flow, flow. flow. When it's not flowing, we're trying to make it happen, we know. Are you getting me? Then we stop. That's the kind of church I want us to be. Not in these small numbers, because we are not going to be small. Amen. You understand? Amen. Expect a thousand of this. Amen. I am the number that is here, and a thousand of it. Amen. Because the Lord is able to do much more than this. Amen. Because the Lord will multiply us a thousand Amen. times more. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Things in your life will no more be like this. Amen. It will be a thousand times more. Amen. Things in your life will be a thousand times more. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Time to be sensitive to things of God. We are not here. Are you getting me? After I never come into this place and say, Look up to me. Are you with me? I follow him. You follow me as I follow him. Look up to him. Look up to him. Look up to him in all things. Look up to him in all things. And I want to implore you. I want to implore you. Everything of life. Look up to him. Look up to him in all things. Look up to him in all things. Answers to prayer, look up to him. Expectation of supernatural intervention, look up to him. In your marriages, look up to him. Over your academics, look up to him. In affairs of your life, look up to him. Finances, look up to him. Academics, look up to him. Your destiny is not like your predecessors. It's much more greater. Yes. Much more greater. Yes. Never waste your life. Never waste your life to mediocrity of life. Pleasures of sins, they last for a few seconds. Eternal life is eternal. Amen. And what you are already in is in eternal life. Are you with me? It's not about what you can make happen. It's what he has it's about what he has made happen in you. And that's what I'm reminding you of this morning. Peter said, let's go back to the story. Peter said, bid me to come. 
because of time, and it does not work, but I might continue there for another time. In Jesus' name. Amen. And he said, Come. Who said? Jesus. What did he say? Come. And what did Peter do? Amen. What did Peter do? Amen. How did you know? Eh? Who knows what Peter did? Raise up your hand. One, two, three, four. Okay. Number one. Who else? Number two. Who else? Three. Uh, Sister Pagama, three. Who else? I want one more. Okay. Sorry. I will take uh, Minister Lola, four. Yes. How do you know? Huh? The word says so. The word says so. Okay. Who is number two? What did Peter do? When he said part, he went out. Because he sent when he was in the world. Three. What did Peter do? The word says, Pastor. Huh? The word says that he came out. He, he went and stepped on the word. The word said? Yes. Okay. Four. What did Peter do? It is written on the word. He came out of the water. Okay. Number one, is that what you said to? So everybody said, you knew what the interpretation of what God says in our life. Why do we go outside what the word says in interpreting it? Relying on the written word in living our life. And I found rooted in the written word. When he speaks the spiritual dilemma, get established in the logos, you will know what to do. Yes. The dilemma may not be comprehensive if the logos is you are nowhere grounded in the logos. Get established in the logos. Get established in what is written. Know what is written so that when the dilemma comes, you knew what to do. And get it done. Simple. Peter stepped out. See, that's what he did. And he said, come. Brethren, in all situations of life, what he says. Father, what are you saying? Peter. Uh, Peter said, Peter is a disciple. Just like new creatures. Just as uh, you and I. Just as you and I. Father, in this shaping boat, to stone and fro, what do I do? How do I do? Where do I go? God said, come. And Peter did what? Peter did what? He yes. went. Are you with me? Yes, sir. What we need to get in all situations of life is what is he saying? What is he saying? Not what he has said. Because conditions might change. Yes. What is he saying? What is God saying? What is God saying? What is he saying now? Not what he has said. Not what he has said. Because situations may change. Dr. Tony, you can come and sit here. Please, I shall start here. What is he saying? What is he saying? The reason why what he's saying to you now is important compared to what he has said is because man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. What proceeds out of the mouth of God to our spirit is like bread. We eat it, it goes away. We use it for our energy. We eat it, it becomes part of us. The bread that you eat, nurture your spirit, your body to grow. The word that you get, nurture your spirit to grow. You understand? Knowing in him that what he said, that God is able to raise the dead. He set out to go and do it. He said, he set out. He said, he set out. What did he say to you? Set out to do. Amen. And as you are going, you keep monitoring. What is he saying? That's why it's very important to be spiritual in life. Amen. Are you with me? You went back again. Mm -hmm. 
not focusing on what he said, and you start considering the contrariness of the wind. The contrariness of the wind. Amen. Even the people in the ship, they are calling him back. He's ah, you will die. You are dying. <laughs> eh? uh, you think we that stayed in the ship that we didn't step out? Do you think we are fully? Eh? Peter, come back. The wind is contrary. Everything about him is shouting. The wind is contrary. Was the wind not contrary before? And that is why, brethren, help your neighbors to be spiritual. Help them focus on what God said. Help your leaders to focus on what God has given them. Yeah. Not the contrariness of the way. Yeah. No man will accomplish great things in life when he con consider the contrariness of the way. The way was contrary, is contrary, will be contrary for life. Amen. <clears throat> the boats of your life. The boats of your life. But despite that fire, Hi. After looking at the wind, he said, Lord, save me. After the big me to come, he has already been going. Because you look, many of you, there are stages in life. Yes. It is big me to come. Yes. Then you step out. Yes. When you have stepped out, you are walking. Yes. You are walking. Then the time comes when you begin to go down. Yeah. Because you are looking at the wind. You understand? Even then, he said, Lord, save me, heal me, deliver me, help me out of this predicament. Fight for me in this situation. You understand? Provide for me. Lord, my husband. Lord, my healing. Lord, my children. Lord, my, 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 my. And everything. But God just said, why do you die? You have been doing it already. You have been walking on the waters of life. You have been walking on the waters of the sea. Despite the wind, contrary. The wind was blowing at X kilometer per hour. It could be 2 kilometer per hour. It could be 160 kilometer per hour. It was in that wind that he stood out. It was in the same way that he stepped out. And yet he has been doing it. He has been doing it. He's going. People in the ship, they are still calling it. Peter, Peter, what are you doing? They, they, they'll call you. It will be like you don't know how to do it. It will be like you're foolish that you stepped out. It will be like, what are you doing? God called you. Focus on that calling. Yeah. Focus on what he said you will yes. do in your life. And you will accomplish great things. Yes. Men, don't begin to sink in life. They sink. Yes. When you are on water, when you take a man, thank God it was even Peter. Peter knew how to sing, swim. <laughs> thank God it was Peter. He's a professor of fishing. As a professor, professor of fishing, of fisheries, fishing, of physiology, he must have had courses in swimming in case mishaps happen. He must have been trained in how to float on water. And then, when the Bible said the wind was contrary and was heavily contrary, you understand? Yeah. His, his brethren in the ship are still babbling. They, they, those ones are fighting for their lives. At the same time, they are calling him, say, why did you do it? We, we that were in the ship, like, you understand? But Jesus is there. Yeah. The Bible said he began to sing. Men don't begin to sing. It shows that there's something about Peter that has changed. Yeah. Men will go down like a lead. Yeah. If you drop them on water. Naturally speaking, Peter can swim. Peter can wiggle and do something. But something about him has changed. He has become like Jesus. He was walking on water. You had become like Jesus. You're walking on water already. Don't be distracted! Don't! Don't be distracted! You understand? Neighbors, close friends, family will distract you. 
Are you with me? Keep your eyes focused. Things. Things. Senses will distract you. Keep your eyes focused on Jesus. What did he say? What did he say? Count it all joy when you fall into diverse trials and temptation. Because the trial of your way faith walk at patience. Let patience have its perfect walk, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Stand up on your feet this morning. Let's give him praise for our lives. Let's give him praise for his provisions. 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 God will give us opportunity to get into his own place. Langa will tell her to be there. Lift up your hands and bless God. Just worship him. Thank him because he's God in your life. He provides for you. The waters of life. But he said, I am with you. I am in you. Greater. Go out and dominate. Sickness and diseases are forbidden. 
working in your life. Your children come to order. They fulfill and come alive with the plan and purpose of God for their life. You fulfill their destiny. The plan and purpose of God for your life comes to pass in the mighty name of Jesus. You are redeemed and redeemed from death. You are redeemed and delivered from lack. You are redeemed and delivered from sickness. No sickness will have power over you. Everywhere you go, the presence of angels goes with you. They protect you in everything we do. I say you will fulfill destiny. I say you will fulfill destiny. You will do mighty wonders. You will do mighty wonders. You will do mighty miracles. In the mighty name of Jesus. Take the break. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had soft, saying, The cup is the New Testament in my blood. As often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Drink the blood. Lift up your hands and receive any help you want. Receive. Receive help from my home. Healings in your spirit, soul, and body. Deliverance from bondages of life. Revelations like never before. Money in your businesses like never before. Flourishing of your businesses like never before. Amen. You stand out from the crowd. Amen. You stand out from the crowd. Amen. You are distinct. Amen. You are excellent. Amen. Receive favor. Favor. Abundance. Receive abundance. With long life. He has satisfied you and show you his salvation. You will never be broke. Amen. You will never be sick. Amen. Open your mouth and declare this with me. Declare this with me. With your eyes, lift up to him and your hands up to him. Say, Father, Father I, 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 I dwell in the secret place of the Most High. I abide under the shadow of the Almighty. We are no enemy or foe or calamity can come. I say of the Lord today, the Lord is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. Over my finances, over my children, the Lord is my refuge. In my business endeavors, concerning my destiny, He is my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Surely He had delivered me from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He has delivered me from noisome pestilence. He shall cover me with His feathers and under His wings shall I trust. The Lord's truth shall be my shield and my buckler. I, shall not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by the day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that destroy and waste at noonday. A thousand shall fall at my side and ten thousand at my right hand but he shall not come near me only with my eyes will I behold and see the reward of the wicked because I have made the Lord which is my refuge even the most high my habitation my dwelling place therefore no evil shall be fun, neither shall any plague come near my dwelling, neither shall any plague, any disease, any disease, all the disease, diabetes, hypertension, TB, HIV, come near my dwelling, for God has given his angels charge of 
for me, to keep me in all my ways. They shall bear me up in their hands, lest I dash my foot against a stone. I will say, for action in this life, in this journey, I shall tread upon the lion. I will say, for action in this life, I shall tread upon the other, the young lion and dragon. Shall I trample on that feet? Because I have set my love upon God, therefore God will deliver me. He will set me on earth because I've known his name. I shall call upon him. He will answer me. He will be with me in trouble. He is in my ship over the seas of life. In the troubling winds of life, the Lord will deliver me and honor me because I know his name. With love. Again. With love. Will he satisfy me and show me his salvation in the name of Jesus. Give him away from God. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Let abundance answer to them. Amen. Windows of heaven be opened over their lives. The gardens of their life be purified by you. A portion is forbidden in their life. A portion of things is forbidden. A portion of children is forbidden. It was down to the fourth generation. In the name of Jesus, they leave a legacy of righteousness. They are righteous men. And they increase in all they do. And speak to your life. The path of the righteous shining bright and bright. Your path shining bright. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. You're blessed. For the sin of the time. 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 For the sin of the time.
in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy follows us all the days of our lives, and we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Please remember to invite someone next week to the church. Do the work of an evangelist. Please help me out to ask your neighbor. Are you going to preach something?